May the sound of the bell remind us that the Spirit of God is within us and among us. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Peter's United Church. We gather today on this third Sunday of Easter to celebrate our faith, our faith that the risen Lord continues to be with us, to celebrate his presence, and to be challenged to make that presence a reality for those with whom we live and encounter. As we gather, let us remember that before we do so, the life and the spirituality of the Atekmakshin and Ashnabic people preceded us. We worship on their traditional territory with gratitude, and we will seek to walk in faithfulness and reconciliation. Hey everybody, Chad Teller here. I'm the chair of your transition team here at St. Peter's United in Sudbury, Ontario, and this is your transition minute. Here we go. I want to say thank you again for all your participation in this transition process. It's been a fun process. We're starting to work on the uh, community of, of faith profile. We're starting to get a search team together. It's really exciting. And so thank you for the small groups. Thank you for the chats, the conversations, the emails. Keep them coming. We love it. Thank you for using our online platform, Padlet, to share your St. Peter's stories and to participate in our Skills and Aspirations Forum. If you have not added to those, please do so soon. Padlet will be closed at the end of April. Thank you to everyone who participated in the Zoom chats that we had on the Wednesday and a couple on Saturday. Uh, we had some good discussion and some ideas came from those chats and those chats are now done. There'll be an upcoming prayer meeting on Thursday, April 29th from 8 to 8.30 p.m. So please send us any prayer requests that you might have to the transition email, transition team at stpetersunited.ca. And please look for the description in this video for the login information. The transition team will also be hosting the May 16th church service coming up in May. Please keep us as your transition team in prayer as we continue to work on the church faith profile. And please be praying for the upcoming uh, search team that will be put together soon. And continue to pray for those that are dealing with illnesses, sicknesses, and having a hard time uh, during these hard times that we're in right now. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, please reach out to us. You can contact any one of us on the team, or you can use our transition team email again, transition team at stpetersunited.ca. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your uh, Sunday. I invite us now, friends, to join together in the call to worship. Come and settle into the comfortable rituals of worship, gathering from a physical distance or within the distance of time. We come longing for the familiarity of life's rhythms when so little is familiar. Come to celebrate our faith story of resurrection, joy, and new life of hope lived into a future where the risen sun blazes light into our gloom. We come to breathe freely the fresh air of renewed faith within us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hello, I'm Carol Germa, chair of the St. Peter's Mission and Service Committee. Throughout Lent, Mission and Service has focused on water. We hoped that we would all become more aware of our daily water use and learn ways to conserve water. As well, we launched a fundraising campaign to support Water First, a charitable organization that works in partnership with First Nations communities to resolve water challenges through education and training. In Ontario, there are 47 boil water advisories in 26 First Nations communities. And 42% of these communities do not have certified operators. In 2021, Water First is partnering with six First Nations, 
that are located within a two-hour drive of Sudbury. Dokies, Henvey, Magnetowan, Wasoxing, Nipissing, and Wanapate. Approximately 12 Indigenous youth will start a 15-month internship program to become certified water treatment plant operators. Our Lenten campaign raised $1,163.13, which will be sent to Water First Internship Program. Thank you very much to all those who donated. And if you weren't able to do donate this time, you may have another opportunity later this year. Keep tuned. Thanks again for your donations to the Water First Internship Program. And remember, let's all be more aware of water and how essential it is to all life. Sisters and brothers, let us join together in prayer. God who gathers us, who upholds us, and who enlivens us, we praise you for the joy that springs from our despair. We honor you as we humbly receive your healing, loving kindness. We submit to your path of self-giving love proclaimed in the risen Christ. In our separation, unite us. In our isolation, embrace us. Into the light of the sun's rise, lead us in the dance of possibilities. Amen. And so we come to this time dedicated to the children of our congregation and those of us who like to think of ourselves as young at heart. And this week, as I was preparing for our celebration, I was touched by the outpouring of grief that has been shown to the royal family and to all those who mourn the loss of Prince Philip. And as I thought back to Prince Philip's life and saw pictures of his travels and heard some of the things that he spoke about, I was reminded of an incident that I had when I was four years old living in Quebec City. My grandmother, my mother's mother, came from England. She was born and raised in Ilfracombe, Devonshire. And she came to Canada after traveling the Atlantic Ocean 15 times as a nanny for a family that had lumber interests in Quebec. My grandmother settled in Canada, and married, had my mother, and my mother and father, of course, had me. In 1951, Prince Philip and Princess Elizabeth came to Canada. And as a four-year-old child, just turned four-year-old because they came in October and I was born in September, a four-year-old child, all dressed up in a gray short pants suit, 
stood with my grandmother on the Grand Delay on the corner of Clairefontaine with a little Union Jack flag in my hand, waving as Prince Philip and Princess Elizabeth passed by. I remember that incident as if it happened yesterday. And in remembering it, one of the things that I learned, or relearned perhaps, is that when we remember, we cause things that have happened in the past to actualize again right now. Things that we remember can happen for us right as we do the remembering. It's as clear to me now as it was when I stood on the Grand Allee. The car came along with the prince and the princess passing by and my grandmother and I waving our Union Jacks. What I want to suggest to us today, friends, is that there is something very important about remembering. Boys and girls, right now you're facing a very difficult time. Our schools are closed. You can't go and see your friends. It's the time for our break from school and a time usually when families take advantage of that free time to travel, to go places. We can't do that this year, but we can remember. Boys and girls, you can remember your friends that you can't see at school. You can remember the fun times that you had together. You can remember all those incidents that took place. And in remembering them, perhaps smile, perhaps discover energy from those experiences. Perhaps remembering can help make what happened happen again. I think sometimes as I'm stuck at home of the wonderful times I've had traveling, riverboat cruises, visiting with friends at the resort in Cuba, reliving those experiences in my memory helped me to experience the joy that was there. If we just live in our moment, if we just live in the sadness of not being able, for example, to go to school and see our friends, we can be very sad. But if we remember the good times, we can cause them to inspire us to be happy that we had those opportunities. We can be happy that we were able to pray with our friends. We can be happy and we can believe that one day we'll be able to do it all again when all this COVID nonsense is behind us. My message to us friends is that when we feel ourselves sort of slumpy and sad and not able to really get excited about things, let's remember, remember the good times and cause those good times to inspire us to get ready for the good times that lie ahead. For what we're living right now is not the whole of the story. What will unfold will indeed lead us into a new experience where just as the things we remember can inspire us, the new things that we hope for will give us courage and energy to move forward. So I hope these little thoughts help you to remember. As I did, four years old, standing on the Grand Delay in Quebec City, waving at Philip and Elizabeth as they passed by, standing with my grandmother. And as I remember that, my grandmother is with me. She is here because in spirit, she has become just like God and will always walk with me as long as I remember to be grateful for what we live together. So have a good day, friends, and I hope that we all remember good times and look forward to a happy future. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our first reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, 
we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. The second reading is from Luke, chapter 24, verses 35 to 48. Then they told what happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Herein lies the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We've just heard the scripture passage from the Gospel according to Luke, read for us, and indeed it is a familiar story. The disciples were on the road to Emmaus. They left Jerusalem downhearted because Jesus, whom they believed was going to set the people of Israel free, had been crucified, and now he lay in a tomb. Indeed, he was dead. And as they walked along, they told a story to each other of how they had hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, what they believed that Jesus would do for his people as God had promised he would. And yet the forces of evil made sure that that didn't happen in the way that they expected. And St. Luke tells us that as they were walking along, they had the experience of Jesus suddenly walking with them, explaining the scriptures to them, telling them that he indeed would have to suffer and then rise again, explaining all the scriptures that prophesied who he would be for the people of Israel. Now we can read that story literally, and we can see it perhaps in the story that as they walked along, this man came and started walking with them. Or we can understand, as we heard in the first reading today, from the first letter of John, that when we move from the physical experience of living within a body, we become just like God. Jesus, in his dying and rising, became just like God, in the same way that we will also. Jesus appeared to the disciples on the road to Emmaus in a real way, but it was a spiritual experience, and it was occasioned by their remembering what they had believed, what they had hoped for. And we are told that once they had come to that insight that Jesus was with them, they returned to Jerusalem, they met those who were locked away in the upper room, and they told them what had happened, 
how Jesus was revealed to them, how they recognized him in the breaking of bread. What I want to tell us about today, friends, is the importance of doing what we are commissioned to do and in doing what we are told to do in memory of the one who has left us with that commandment, we discover that person. We find the person that we long for in doing the things that that person did. My sense, friends, is that it was in the experience that the disciples had of sitting at table, remembering that at the Last Supper, that's what Jesus did. And doing what Jesus did, they broke bread together. And they recognized that Jesus was present to them in that experience. As Christian people, we give great importance to the bread and the wine of our communion services. But I want to suggest to us very sincerely and very importantly that we can make a tremendous mistake perhaps, or we can ignore the real commandment. The commandment that Jesus left was not to see him in bread and wine, but rather to experience him in doing what he did, and in this context today, in breaking bread. We break bread, we remember, and we experience the presence of the risen Lord. The disciples on the road to Emmaus are very much like us today, friends. They were discouraged. They were downhearted. They had lost hope in many ways. We are living with COVID-19. We find ourselves isolated in our homes, told to stay home except for essential outings. We find ourselves away from family, away from friends, and like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we are discouraged in many ways. We are depressed, perhaps. This week we received the terrible news of what is happening to our beloved Laurentian University and to the Federated Universities. A terrible disaster that is befalling our community and people that we know and people that we have worked with, people that now are being displaced in this terrible, terrible experience. We, with them, are discouraged, perhaps angry, certainly hurt that our beloved institution has been so devastated in many ways. Do we stay with our depression? Do we stay with our despair? Do we stay with our hurt and our anger? Or do we remember? Remember what Jesus commissioned his disciples to do and what he has commissioned us to do. To break bread. To tell stories. To remember. And to discover that in the midst of all of this, he has not abandoned us. He doesn't appear to us literally as the scripture describes it. And we need to understand that that literal description that is given in both the road to Emmaus story and the upper room story are told literally in order to tell us and to challenge us to believe that it was a true experience that people had. They experienced the risen Lord. The writers tell us they touched his body. But we know that those who become just like God do not live within bodies. They are spirit. And because they are spirit, they are capable of being with us. In our moments of struggle right now, friends, however we are influenced to struggle, in however our moments of darkness appear to us, Jesus is present. Our challenge is to do what he did and discover that he is with us. My invitation to us as we gather in our variety of 
places today, in our separate homes, in our apartments, in our places of residence. My invitation for us is to do what we are told happened on the road to Emmaus. The disciples sat at table. They told the story of what they were feeling. They broke bread and their eyes were open that Jesus was present. Not in the bread, but in the experience of doing what he commanded them to do. Friends, sit at table, tell the story, speak of whatever it is, the emotion that you are carrying with you. Speak of your fear, of your anger, of your despair. Speak of the darkness, perhaps, that we are all living because of the circumstances that are with us. But don't stay there. Break bread. Share the bread. Share the story. And discover that in that experience, Jesus is faithful. He will be as he has promised to be, always present, giving us hope and giving us courage. The Easter story, friends, is not something that happens in isolation. It isn't that all of a sudden on Easter day we celebrate the resurrection that Jesus experienced. The resurrection happened because of all that preceded it. All the darkness, all the violence, all the hatred, all the judgment passed on him the crucifixion, that awful dark experience when the clouds came over and the sun didn't shine in that experience of his dying. All of that led to the resurrection. And if we deny all of that or forget it, we miss the point of what God does in response to the pain and the sorrow that we feel. Friends, we are where we are, and we need to be honest about that, as the disciples on the road to Emmaus were. And we need to do what Jesus did, to break bread, to tell the story, and to celebrate what our faith tells us, that through the darkness we come to Easter Day, and we discover that life is worth living, the pain of today can be replaced with the joy of Easter. But what's necessary, I believe, is to do what the disciples did, and that is to speak their truth, to speak of their sorrow, to speak of their fear. And then, in the mystery of all of that darkness, to do what Jesus did, and discover that through it all, he is with us. He journeys with us, and we recognize him, and we rise with him to newness of life. I don't want this sermon this morning to be Pollyanna. I don't want it to be an experience of, of simply saying, hang on, it's going to be wonderful at the end of it all. What I want it to be, friends, is an invitation to truly live our faith, to truly ask ourselves, do we believe that God responds to the suffering and the pain that we endure with a promise and an actualizing of new life? Are we truly Easter people? Easter people are not those who all of a sudden celebrate the resurrection. Easter people are those who are honest enough to believe that like Jesus, we have to journey through some darkness in order to come into the fullness of new life. And so friends, I wish you well. I wish us all well as we live these moments. And I hope that we will all take inspiration from what Jesus inspired the disciples on the road to do I hope we will break bread in his memory and discover him very much alive with us.
So friends, in our gathering, we dedicate the offerings that we have made for the work of the church and to be used as signs of hope for those in our community that we are able to serve. And we pray. Jesus, when we break bread, we recognize you. You are the fire that burns within us. Use us and our gifts to light the world. Amen. Friends, wherever we are, let's gather in prayer, mindful that God is attentive to who we are and what our needs may be this day. Merciful and loving God, we come into your presence today, hoping to touch and experience the risen Jesus, to see ourselves in the truth of his resurrection. Gather up our lingering fears and our confusion. Meet our doubts with compassion and understanding. We ask you, O God, to open our eyes to your love and your grace that surrounds us. Open our ears to hear you calling us to new challenges. Open our imaginations to new possibilities. Come anew to all who have been unable to believe. Come anew to all who have known you and continue to celebrate the presence of the risen one whom we remember this day. And as we gather, we bring to you those who have been on our minds and those who have asked us to remember them. And we remember especially those for whom we have promised to pray. And we gather all our thoughts, all our memories, and all those for whom we lift our intentions to God, joining them in the one prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Friends, as we prepare to return to our daily activities, let us ask ourselves, what is the world waiting for? Glimpses of heaven above or glimpses of the kingdom around us? Let our witness to the kingdom be a moment of revelation to its wonders among us. And as we go, we ask you, O God, to bless us, God of Easter, so that we and all creation might be one with the living Christ, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and praise now and forever. Amen.